Decimal numbers are values that include a whole and part of a whole separated by a decimal point. Just like whole numbers, decimal numbers can be subtracted from each other. Imagine you are going to take the bus. Bus money is $3.50. You check to see how much money you have. When you count your money, you have $17.60. How much money will be left after paying for the bus ride? We can estimate the answer. $17.60 is approximately $18, and $3.50 is approximately $4. If we take $4 from $18, we have about $14 left. When you take the coins you need for bus money, you have $14.10 left. All of these numbers, $3.50, $17.60, and $14.10 are decimals. Decimals are numbers made up of a whole and part of a whole. In this case, the whole is dollars and the part of a whole is cents. A decimal point separates the whole and the part of a whole. We subtracted the decimals. We can write this as an equation, $17.60 minus $3.50 is equal to $14.10. If the difference is close to what we estimated, we can be confident that our work and our answer is correct. Another way to subtract these numbers is to represent them on a number line. Place $17.60 on the number line. We want to subtract $3.50. The answer will be $3.50 less, or a value to the left, of $17.60 on the number line. Start by removing $3. That's the same as moving three spaces to the left. We are now at $14.60. $17.60 minus $3 is $14.60. We can move 50 cents to the left. We are now at $14.10. $17.60 minus $3.50 is $14.10. How close is the difference to the estimate? It may be helpful to think of this equation as an addition question. How much do we need to add to $3.50 to make $17.60? Or, how far is it on the number line from $3.50 to $17.60? We can move the arrow to start at zero instead of $3.50. The distance between $3.50 and $17.60 is the same as the distance from 0 to approximately 14. We can estimate the difference to be approximately $14. One way to find the distance between the values is to add on to $3.50 first to get to a whole dollar. This is called adding to get a friendly number. A friendly number is any value you find easier to use. For example, we can add 50 cents to make four whole dollars. Remember, a dime is one-tenth of a dollar, so we are adding five-tenths of a dollar, or 50 cents. Then add 13 dollars to make 17 dollars. And then add 60 cents to make 17 dollars and 60 cents. How much did we add altogether? We added 50 cents, then $13, and then 60 cents. Now add these numbers together. Think of 60 cents as 50 cents and 10 cents. 50 cents and 50 cents makes $1. $1 and $13 is $14. Add 10 cents and the answer is $14.10. This means that $17.60 is $14.10 more than $3.50. How close is the difference to the estimate? 
We can also use a place value chart to help organize the digits when subtracting decimals. The dollar amounts, or whole, are to the left of the decimal point, and the cents, or part of a whole, are to the right of the decimal point. Fill the digits into the chart. $17 is one $10 bill and seven loonies. There is one 10 and seven ones. 60 cents is six dimes. A dime is one tenth of a dollar. There are six tenths. Three dollars and fifty cents has three loonies or three ones, five dimes or five tenths, and zero hundredths. Now subtract three dollars and fifty cents by removing the three loonies. This is the same as subtracting three ones. Remove five dimes, which is the same as subtracting five tenths. No tens or hundredths are subtracted. There is one ten, four ones, one tenth and zero hundredths remaining. Seventeen dollars and sixty cents subtract three dollars and fifty cents is fourteen dollars and ten cents. When we subtracted these decimal values, we subtracted digits with the same place value. We can see that we get the same difference using each method. The estimate is still close to the difference, so we can be confident about the answer. Imagine that you have a $20 gift card for a movie theater. A ticket to the movie costs $12.95. How much money will you have left on your gift card? We can estimate the answer. $12.95 is approximately $13. If we spend $13, there should be approximately $7 left on the gift card. To find the exact amount of the money left on the card, we have to subtract. We can use a number line to represent this. Start by subtracting 12. That's the same as moving 12 spaces to the left. We are now at 8 on the number line. Subtracting 95 cents is the same as subtracting 9 tenths of a dollar and 5 hundredths of a dollar. When we move 9 tenths to the left of 8, we get 7 and 1 tenth. When we move 5 hundredths to the left, we get to 7 and 5 hundredths. There will be $7 and 5 cents left on the gift card. How close is the difference to the estimate? It may be helpful to think of this as an addition question. How much do we need to add to $12.95 to make $20? Or, how far is it on the number line from $12.95 to $20? One way to do this is to add on to $0.95 cents first to get to a whole dollar. This is called adding to get a friendly number. A friendly number is any value that you find easier to use. We can add five cents or five hundredths of a dollar to make 13 whole dollars. Add seven dollars to make 20 dollars. We added five cents and then seven dollars. 20 dollars is seven dollars and five cents more than 12 dollars and 95 cents. Or the difference between 20 dollars and 12 dollars and 95 cents is seven dollars and five cents. How close is the difference to the estimate? We can also use a place value chart to help organize the digits when subtracting decimal numbers. Fill the digits into the chart. Twenty dollars has two tens and zero ones. Twelve dollars and ninety-five cents has one ten, two ones, nine tenths and five hundredths. When we subtract decimal values, we subtract digits with the same place value. It is helpful to put zeros in the table to fill the columns. Subtracting the tens, we get one ten. But how can we subtract the ones? Or the tenths? Or the hundredths? Remember, ten ones is one ten. We can take one ten and change it to ten ones. This is sometimes called borrowing or regrouping. Now we can subtract the ones. 
Ten ones minus two ones is eight ones. We can borrow again. Ten tenths is one one. We can take one one and change it to ten tenths. Ten tenths minus nine tenths is one tenth. To subtract the hundredths, change one tenth to ten hundredths. Ten hundredths minus five hundredths is five hundredths. There are zero tens, seven ones, zero tenths, and five hundredths remaining. In other words, twenty dollars subtract twelve dollars and ninety-five cents is seven dollars and five cents. We get the same difference using each method. The estimate is still close to the difference, so we can be confident about the answer. Here is another example: six hundred eighty-five and three tenths minus sixty-four and ninety-eight hundredths. Before subtracting these numbers, we can estimate the answer. Six hundred eighty-five and three tenths is approximately six hundred ninety, and sixty-four and ninety-eight hundredths is approximately sixty. Six hundred ninety minus sixty is about six hundred thirty. Now we can subtract the numbers. Fill the digits into a place value chart. Fill zeros into columns, and subtract digits of the same place value. We do not have enough tenths and hundredths, so we can borrow. Change one one to ten tenths. We get four tenths, and one tenth to ten hundredths. We get two hundredths. The answer is six hundred twenty and thirty-two hundredths. The estimate is close to the difference, so we can be confident about the answer. We have shown different methods to subtract decimal numbers. Choose the method that makes the most sense to you. You might use different methods depending on the numbers in the question. Whatever method you choose, the key to subtracting decimal values is to subtract digits of the same place value. A helpful model to organize the digits is a place value chart. It may be helpful to fill in spaces in the columns with zeros. You may need to borrow or regroup. This means taking one from one column and changing it to ten of a smaller value in the column to the right. Another helpful model for subtracting decimals is a number line. A number line can be used to represent the size and position of decimal values. When we subtract, we move to the left along a number line. A strategy for subtracting numbers is to think of the question as an addition problem and add up from the smaller number to the larger number. When we add up, we move to the right along a number line. Sometimes it helps to think about the values as dollars and cents. It is important to use estimation as a strategy to check your work and confirm your answers. Watch this video again or others in this video series if that might be helpful, and talk to your teacher if you have any questions.